Chapter 78 The Giant Rudiman's Vision The Significance of Man as the Child of God After these words, Abidam dismissed Thuarim in a physical, but not spiritual, sense. And Thuarim, almost dissolved in love and gratitude, had to let go of Abidam's hand externally, but clung all the more desperately to the same in his heart. In this frame of mind, he stepped backwards a few paces, just like Sihel so as not to lose sight of him, whom his heart had now recognised to be holy, 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 and full of the most sublime fatherly love. When he was again in his former spot among his brothers, Abdom summoned Rudiman, saying, Rudiman, come and speak and bear witness. Amen. And the very big Rudiman promptly stepped forward from among his brothers and stood there like a celestial pillar, immobilised with sheer humility, love and respect before the high Abidim. Despite his embarrassment, his whole being expressed nevertheless a truly manly calm and quiet dignity which could only manifest to this degree with Rudiman. For in physical size, he surpassed by far all children, including Adam, being a giant sixteen spans tall, and otherwise enormously strong in all his muscles and nerves. As this giant hesitated for a long time, becoming more and more afraid and full of respect, pondered who he was, before whom he was standing, about to speak, Abidam gave him a loving, friendly look, and asked him, Rudiman, why do you hesitate before me, your father and God? What keeps your heart imprisoned and your tongue tied? Leave that which is of no use for now. Take courage in your heart and speak up. Amen. These encouraging words entered like an etheric life balm into the whole being of Rudiman, and his heart became free of all anxiety, and his tongue light like feather down. Thus he began to speak with the mighty voice of a giant which was so loud that his words reverberated from the walls of the nearest mountain before they faded away. And this is what he said. God, Father, you eternal, purest love, who are holy, holy, holy. Who can love, glorify and praise you adequately? and in accordance with your majesty. For too wondrously great and holy is everything you, O Holy Father, give us. What is man in all his lowliness and complete nothingness for you, O great, eternal, almighty God? To remember him and let him feel so mightily the outpourings of your infinite grace, love, and mercy. Yes, only now do I recognize it clearly and distinctly that you, O oh God, are a true Father, and we are your children. For what else should you be, and what we, having been begotten only by your holy will through your endless love, Yes, yes, you are truly the Holy Father of us all, and we are truly your children, and endlessly great out of you, 
and sublime and mighty. But small and insignificant indeed, nothing out of ourselves, since not we, but you have begotten us out of your eternal, endless love. Left to our own devices, we are truly nothing. But at your fatherly heart, we are great. Yes, unspeakably great, strong and immensely mighty, so much so that before our slightest whiff, worlds and suns and moons flee like the lightest of dust, whirled up by the slightest breeze. Truly, I would not say this, had I not seen and felt it in my vision. I saw it, and felt it mightily, and thus I speak according to this truth, which through the grace of our Holy Father I found, and most clearly and mightily felt, and beheld deeply within me. For soon after the sacred commission to contemplate our innermost, the earth and the entire visible firmament disappeared and I floated alone in the midst of an endless, infinite space. For a long time my eyes stared into the endless depths of infinities. But this idle pursuit was in vain, for even every mote of dust had disappeared into some abyss of the infinities. Only I alone was floating here without the support of any world globe in the hallowed darkness of the infinite, eternal space. But suddenly a great thought emerged from my depth, and this thought was a holy word which ran thus. With the small finger of your hand, wipe the small toe of one of your feet. One moat of dust will stick. Examine this moat. And I promptly did according to the word. But as I was doing this, behold, the moat began to expand over my smallest finger, dissolving into countless atoms of dust. And the atoms promptly grew into suns, worlds and moons, and shot out of my hand into the endless depths of depths, filling with light and beings, the endless, formerly empty space. Here I trembled to my innermost core before my own majesty and thought, what all this was stuck to my toe, not even perceptible to me. But another word rose within me, saying, Do you believe God's children to be gnats crawling in the dust? Behold your own growth, and compare yourself with all that the moat before you becomes, and you will realize what you are, and what the things sticking to your toe are. And I was lifted up. All the things floated like shimmering sand before my eyes. But soon a mighty light emerged from me, by which the endless space was filled. And only in this light did I behold the majesty of God's children, the nothingness compared to them of all the other things, and why the Holy Father came to us, teaching us in person the roads of infinity.
Thus I have spoken, having seen and felt it thus. Other than that, I saw nothing. Therefore to you, God, our Father, all praise, honour, love and gratitude forever. Amen.